Hello, and welcome to another Adult Coloring Tuesday tutorial. I'm your host and your artist, Lisa Mitrokin. Today, I'll show you how to color a realistic peacock feather. I'll be working with something that you guys have been requesting for a while, watercolor, and specifically using a water brush pen. So let's see how it's done. I've never used a water brush pen before. This is brand new and you guys get to watch me break it in. The way that this works is that you unscrew it and fill the back part with water and then put it all back together again. And it's like an ink pen, except instead of ink, you have water and instead of a quill tip, you have this brush. So it seems that the brush is just constantly slightly saturated with water. You don't need to shake the pen or apply any pressure. It just works like a damp brush. It's kind of magical. I just touch my watercolor with the brush and it picks up just enough pigment for me to comfortably paint with for quite a while. The experience is actually more like painting digitally than painting with watercolor the traditional way. Very interesting. I think I can get used to this. For my subject today, I drew this practice page of a peacock feather. I figured it would be a perfect candidate for my experiment since it has a lot of parallel lines and also these nice feathery gradients, much like hair or fur. This brush will be a perfect mix of painting and drawing to achieve the desired effect. Hopefully. Oh, by the way, if you want to color along with me, I put up this page as a free download in my Facebook group at home. If you're not already a member, you need to join the group in order to access the album called YouTube Pages. In it, you will find this page along with many other free downloads for the other video tutorials that I have up. The feather itself came from my pet peacock, Kevin. I did a little video about him a few months back. You should check that out as well. You can meet my boy and learn more about these magnificent birds and their feathers. And the links to everything that you need to reference are, of course, in the video description, as always. My group, the peacock video, and also a list of all the materials that I use in the studio including these watercolors and brush pens. So don't forget to scroll through the video description after the show as well. So I'm just gradually applying my pigment line after line, always working from the center of the feather out, following the lines. I'm also kind of trailing my brush strokes off, applying more pressure at the base and less at the end, just brushing these lines onto the page. And Speaking of the page, you probably noticed that I'm working on white paper today instead of my signature toned paper. I actually printed this on real watercolor paper. It's not pure white, I'd say off-white or eggshell, but very pleasant and very close to white. Certainly not the toned paper that I usually use. Watercolor paper tends to have slightly different textures on two of its sides. You usually have the actual working side with the desired tooth and the flip side, which tends to be a little smoother. I'm actually working on the flip side of this page. That's a good trick to keep in mind when you're printing, and especially when you're printing designs with thin lines and lots of detail. You see, when you try to print on the textured side, your design will actually smear in the printing process, and sometimes quite badly. And in coloring, that's just not acceptable. You want your lines to be as clean and readable as possible, but you also want thick and durable paper to survive all the water you're about to apply to it. So the back of the page strikes the perfect balance. I'm not calling out specific colors here because, well, they don't have names the way that colored pencils do. Every watercolor set comes with this pretty much standard palette, and you just have to gauge what works best for your effect. This is one of the reasons that I love working with watercolor. It's kind of liberating. I'm sure that there are sets out there that are fancy with name brands that I have no idea even exist, but I'm sure you guys will quickly educate me on. And I'm sure that these fancy sets also have their fancy color names, but this is a very basic set and basic is more than enough for this effect. The thing that you need to keep in mind with peacock feathers is that their main colors are reddish brown, lilac or violet, and several shades of green. And of course you have that sapphire blue effect in the very center of the feather. The other interesting thing about these feathers is that each one of these long hairs on the side, 
each one of those is made up of a million tiny little feathers themselves, and that creates the iridescent look that you see. If you turn a peacock feather one way, you see that it's brown and purple, but if you turn it another way, you see bright emerald green in the same exact spot. Keeping that in mind, I'm applying several layers of all of these colors, line by line, sometimes overlapping, and sometimes showing off the colors side by side. Since I can only depict my feather frozen in time and space, I can't show off the iridescent effect of the feather when it's turned. So the next best thing is to depict it in a position where you can see a little bit of every color. See how adding dark brown over my emerald green suddenly gives it extra volume? Pretty neat, right? For the center of the eye, this part of the feather design is called eye, I'm using the brightest blue that my set has to offer, and also a touch of black. For the side feather strings, or hairs, or whatever they are, I'm using all the same colors, kind of letting them blend into each other to create this muddy brown effect, because really that's how this part of the feather comes across. Kind of velvety brown with some hints of green and violet. I gotta say, I'm really enjoying this water brush pen thing. I would definitely recommend getting several of these though, ideally in different brush sizes and shapes, if you want to do more with watercolors than just feather coloring. The feather is a good practice subject because it's all lines and directional strokes, but if I wanted to paint something more complex, like a landscape or a portrait, I would need more brush diversity. Also, you can't see it on camera, but I actually have a backup water jar next to my drawing board. And every time I switch between colors, I rinse my brush off. If I had multiple brushes, I could designate one to each color and then I would just be unstoppable. You also want to play with the amount of water for true watercolor effects. The water that's provided by the pen is fine, but it's a set amount, it's a fixed amount. And it's perfect for making nice clean lines, but when you're painting more, realistic stuff with space and in three dimensions, you really need to be able to use more water. This is very much like using pencils or markers. However, if you want a more traditional watercolor bleed or splatter effect, you need to follow the more classic method of applying water to the page and then adding dabs of color. And for that, you need a designated clean water brush and a good old fashioned water jar. So. My assessment for this strange new device, the water brush pen, is that it's super cool, very enjoyable, but it should not be the only tool that you're relying on for making watercolor art. It's great for line work and for fine detail, but I would recommend a set of these of different sizes and of course still use the regular water brush and a water jar. So this thing is really more of an accessory than a tool. And there you have it, our feather, all done. You may choose to go over some of the finer detail with colored pencils at this point. Pencils work beautifully over watercolor, dry watercolor. Keyword here being dry. Make sure that the page actually had some time to recover from all the water that you applied to it. So if you want to take this a step further, maybe push it a little closer to photorealism, do play with some finer details with your colored pencils. You may come up with some cool effects. Also, white charcoal works very well over dry watercolor. We don't need it here, but in many instances you might. So that's another cool thing to try. And now that you know how to do this in watercolor, join me and tech support next week to do another peacock feather, but this time in colored pencils. Next Tuesday, we're doing another evening live stream and I'll be coloring this feather on the dark skin tones page that you guys voted on doing together. So I'll see you on Tuesday. That's Tuesday, June 9th, 2020. If it's already past June 9th, there will be a link in the video description to that show. And also there will be a clickable window at the end of the video as the end screen. Thank you so much for watching my video all the way to the end. It means a lot to me that you're still here and it helps my channel. So please also remember to hit that thumbs up button for me and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.